You'd never feed your children spoiled grocery store food, so why feed it to your dog? Conventional dog food is often made from spoiled supermarket meat and packing plant scraps. Gross, right? That's why veterinarian Dr. Marty created Nature's Blend, a nutritious and freeze-dried food for man's best friend. The first four ingredients are turkey, beef, salmon, and duck. No mystery meat to be found. I have a yellow lab, and she is not a picky eater by any means. But I sleep easy knowing that when I feed her Nature's Blend, I'm doing my part to keep her happy and healthy for the long haul. Feed your best pal the best. Head to drmartypets.com forward slash sustainable. That's drmartypets.com forward slash sustainable to get Dr. Marty's Nature's Blend today. Hello and welcome back. My name is Stephanie Safarian and you're listening to episode 327 of Sustainable Minimalists. Welcome to part two of Boundaries Week. On Tuesday's episode, we discussed setting gifting boundaries. And on today's show, we are discussing the why and the how between setting boundaries around all things holidays. The holidays, obviously, surprise to no one can be a stressful time of year. There's the baking, the shopping, there's the million things on our to-do list, there's the holiday parties, the intrusive personal questions, there's the awkward conversations around the dinner table. I could go on and on. It's no surprise then that a 2021 study by Sesame found that three in five Americans feel that their mental health is negatively impacted by the holidays, and 60% report an increase in anxiety and 52% feeling an increase in depression during the holiday season. So on today's show, we're doing a bunch of things. We're defining boundaries. We're discussing the precursors before you ever set one. We're discussing how exactly to set a boundary, according to psychologists. And finally, we're finishing the episode in part four with outlining the holiday-related problem and then specifying the boundary that you perhaps could enact in your own life this holiday season. So let's start first with the boundary question. What on earth is a boundary? A boundary is a limit that you set with yourself and or with others. So we often think of boundaries in terms of verbalizing to others our line in the sand. But it's important to remember that you can set a boundary with yourself. A boundary with yourself during the holidays could mean I'm leaving this holiday party at 930 even though the party is going to go on to midnight. I'm choosing to leave at 9.30. Or I'm choosing to have two alcoholic beverages tonight, no more. When we set boundaries for ourselves, they're a form of self-management. When we set boundaries for others, we are expressing how we expect to be treated, as well as what behavior we will stand for versus which ones we will not. I should say that it can be more difficult for people with anxiety or depression to set boundaries with themselves and others. This tends to be seen most often in people who report having low self-esteem. If you have low self-esteem, being assertive with other people can be really darn hard. And especially if you consider your self-worth in terms of how much you serve, how much happiness you provide to other people, the thought of setting a boundary in your interpersonal relationships can be stressful and can lead you to avoid setting boundaries at all. However, and this is a quote from Brene Brown, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. I'm going to say that again because who doesn't love a good Brene Brown quote? Daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. The benefits to setting healthy boundaries with ourselves and with others are multitudinous, right? During the holidays, setting healthy boundaries can limit that potential to feel overwhelmed. Boundaries can help protect our overall mental and emotional well-being. 
Although boundaries may sometimes get the side eye when we set a boundary with somebody in our lives, eventually experts argue that boundary setting will indeed strengthen your interpersonal relationships. It will improve communication. Boundaries lead to greater trust and respect and connection. Nobody's going to walk all over you because you're verbalizing your needs, your wants, what you'll stand for. You're making the line in the sand explicit. I should say here too, for people who don't like setting boundaries, don't like verbalizing their needs, many people, myself included, will appreciate it when you let them know exactly what you want and need. (laughs) I love it when people tell me their boundaries. Absolutely love it because now I know where the line is. The line's not shifting. I know this is the boundary and I know not to cross it. And it's, of course, important to remember too that if you verbalize your boundaries, you have you think you've done your best job and people repeatedly don't respect them, it's time to reevaluate those relationships. Some other benefits of setting boundaries. So if you've never done it before and you're thinking to yourself, I'm not doing that, that sounds scary. Perhaps the greatest and most important benefit then is a personal one. And that is, according to psychologists, when you set boundaries, you gain self-confidence. And that's because you're getting clear on who you are, on what you want. You know your values, you know your belief systems. And so when you intentionally hone in on the core, on your core, You're focusing on yourself. You're focusing on your well-being. You'll tend to avoid burnout because you have gained that greater sense of identity. And of course, greater sense of identity, avoiding burnout, enhancing your self-esteem, all of that leads to a greater sense of self-confidence. Now, before we set any boundary, any boundary, I believe, and this is not rooted in science, This is rooted in lessons Stephanie's learned from 38 years on this planet. We got to get centered around two important precursors to setting a boundary. So two things you have to understand in your soul before you ever attempt to set a boundary with yourself or with another person. And the first is that the holidays are also for you. The word holiday connotes a break of some sort right? I did look up the definition because I'm a total nerd. The dictionary definition of a holiday is a day of festivity or recreation when no work is done. That's the official definition. So what is a holiday not? A holiday isn't mom running herself ragged, trying to create Christmas cheer for everyone she comes in contact with. A holiday isn't mom staying up all night, creating a idyllic winter wonderland for the children. (laughs) A holiday at its most fundamental level is a break. And that holiday is also for you. It's for you too. It's not just for everybody else. And you're a little worker bee, a little holiday elf. No, no, no. A holiday should also be a break for you. And you deserve that break. You deserve it. So you have to understand that soul deep before you ever set a boundary, that the holiday is also for you. It's not for every other person except for you. It's not for every other person except for moms. A holiday is a break and we all deserve a break. It's almost ironic to have the first holiday precursor to boundaries be a suggestion, a reminder to do less and to take that break. It goes against every well-intended plan for a festive and memorable season, and everybody wants the winter wonderland, holly jolly, good cheer time of year. And the reality is that people create that holly jolly winter wonderland, and usually it's the moms. But Doing less leaves more time for the real meaning of Christmas. And so I invite you to ask yourself, what is the meaning of the holiday season for you? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of this holiday? Let's get intentional by honing in on that. And so some questions to ask yourself here as we're remembering that the holidays are also for you to enjoy. Some questions to ask yourself, what is traditions are important for you to do this holiday season? Which ones light you up? 
Do you need time for yourself this holiday season? And if so, how can you give yourself what you need? How do you want to feel after the holidays are over? What will help you feel happy during the holidays? And finally, are you saying yes to a lot of things because you feel guilty? So ask yourself those questions and see what answers come up. You might be surprised. The second precursor to setting a boundary is to understand your limits. Understand your limits. So I know some of you, maybe many, maybe most of you are really good with understanding your limits. And I am jealous if that sounds accurate for you. I do not know my limits. Never known them. I live externally. (laughs) I don't know my limits until they have been blown to smithereens and I am burned out, exhausted, resentful, frustrated, angry, just a miserable shell of a human. If you understand your limits intuitively, awesome. Hold on tight to your limits and preserve and protect them through boundaries. But if you're like me and you don't even know your limits, I think it's super helpful. It has been super helpful for me in my life when I don't know my limits and I do live externally to ask people in my external world (laughs) how they think I'm doing. So I am in the habit of asking my husband, asking my children, asking those closest to me questions like, how do you think I'm doing lately? How am I acting? Am I acting stressed? Am I acting festive? Am I acting calm? Is there anything concerning with my behavior that I should be aware of? Because again, I don't even know it myself. I need to work on knowing thyself in 2023, clearly. But if you know your limits, good, preserve them with a boundary. If you don't, consider asking those in your sphere what they notice about your behavior, because that will then inform you of your limits. So those are the two precursors before you ever set a healthy boundary. And we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we are going to outline the how, so the steps for outlining a boundary as per psychology. We'll get there in a quick minute after a word from this week's sponsor. Millions of Americans experience thinning hair. It's not just common, it's normal, and it's not openly talked about, especially amongst women. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist-recommended hair growth supplement. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. Each formula is physician-formulated using natural, medical-grade ingredients, You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering promo code SUSTAINABLE to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, guys and gals, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Get free shipping on every order and $15 off at Nutrafol.com. That's N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. Promo code SUSTAINABLE. Finding high quality, affordable groceries in one place is almost impossible, but thanks to Thrive Market, I stress less because I get everything I need and so much more in one place. If you're gearing up for the holidays, Thrive Market is your stress free solution. Order from the comfort of your couch. Their fast and free and carbon neutral shipping gets your order to you in no time. I am hosting Christmas dinner this year, and Thrive Market will be my first stop because buying from Thrive means saving 30% off the best organic groceries. Get convenient, high quality, affordable groceries delivered with Thrive Market. Join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash sustainable for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash sustainable. Do you have items in your closet that you've worn once or not at all? Enter Armoire. Armoire allows you to rent high-end designer clothing for every occasion, and then, here's the key, send it back. 
I had a family event to go to just last weekend, and I rented the most amazing black jumpsuit from Armoire. It's something I never would have tried on in the store, but I looked good, I felt good, and I felt even better knowing that I could return this item. It wasn't mine to keep. It was mine to borrow. Right now, you, my listeners, can get up to 50% off your first month. That's up to $125 off. Armoire.style slash sustainable. That's A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash sustainable to get up to 50% off your first month. Never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. And we are back on today's show. We are discussing setting boundaries during the holidays, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page in that boundary setting is a really important life skill that's useful all the time, not just during December. So if you're not in the habit of verbalizing your needs and wants with the people in your life, and if you're constantly feeling as though your needs and wants are trampled on (laughs) by your loved ones, it is time, my friends, to set a healthy boundary. So now we're going to get into the how-to. And I have discussed this in previous episodes before, especially at episode 243. I'll link to it in the show note. But the best time to set a boundary is the first time an issue arises. So let's say Aunt Mabel at the dinner table asks you yet again why you're not married. (laughs) The first time Aunt Mabel asks that, that's the time to set the boundary. The second best time to set a boundary is right the heck now. So what am I saying here? We don't want to let a problematic behavior that crosses our lines in the sand, we don't want to let that problematic behavior become a pattern. We don't want a pattern to establish here. However, if you haven't set the boundary and a pattern has been established, it's still a great time to set a boundary. So what do psychologists say are the steps for setting a boundary with Aunt Mabel and everybody else? Step one is to be as clear and as straightforward as possible. So if Aunt Mabel just triggered you and you are on an emotional high because she hit your pain point of not being married, don't respond right then. Get your ducks in a row. Get yourself to a calm inner place. And then when you're there, be clear and straightforward with Aunt Mabel. Do not raise your voice. Step two is to state your need or request directly in terms of what you'd like rather than what you don't like. So we're not going to say to Aunt Mabel, I don't want you to ask about my marital status anymore. Instead, you would say something like, Aunt Mabel, I would really appreciate it if moving forward, we could steer clear of conversations about my personal life. Done. Easy. Step three. Accept any discomfort that arises in you and in the other person. So in you, you might be feeling guilty or shame or embarrassment or regret right after (laughs) setting a boundary, right? All the feelings. Those feelings are normal, by the way, but don't let them derail you. Aunt Mabel, she might say, she could say many things, but it'll likely be one of two things. Aunt Mabel is either going to say, oh, okay, Stephanie, I didn't understand that that was upsetting to you or concerning, or I will certainly do better in the future. Or Aunt Mabel is going to say, what's wrong with you, Stephanie? I'm just asking a question. Like, lighten up. Have a sense of humor. You're so sensitive. Okay, So Aunt Mabel's probably going to say one of either two things. And if she says the latter, if she blames you when you try to set a boundary... (laughs) You're going to hold your line in the sand. You're going to sit there and you are going to say, I hear what you're saying, Aunt Mabel, but I would appreciate it if we no longer talk about my personal life at the holiday dinner table. Don't move your line just because your line has made Aunt Mabel uncomfortable. 
Now, for my conflict avoiders listening, that must sound so scary. (laughs) The good news is that setting boundaries and sitting with that discomfort and marinating in that conflict does indeed get easier the more you practice, okay? Aunt Mabel's discomfort has nothing to do with you. Aunt Mabel's discomfort and attack, verbal reattack, is not due to anything you've done. It's due to the fact that she was called out on her poor behavior. So it's all on Aunt Mabel. It has nothing to do with you. Now, the Aunt Mabel example is just one, and we're going to go into a bunch in a minute. But examples of boundaries you could set for yourself during the holiday include, again, leaving a party at 930, limiting your drinking to two glasses, sticking to your budget, not checking your work emails on your day off, (laughs) choosing not to send holiday cards or choosing not to do any holiday tradition that no longer serves you, choosing to say no to parties that you really don't want to go to. So those are personal boundaries you can set with yourself. And I would argue that setting personal boundaries Boundaries tends to be easier than setting interpersonal ones. And so that's where I really want to spend the rest of our time together today. I have seven potential interpersonal, I don't want to use the word problems, but I'll say seven potential interpersonal issues that could arise in the next few weeks, as well as seven potential boundaries that you could set interpersonally with the people in your lives. So the first one, of course is overspending during the holidays. We have all these people in our lives. We love them very much. They give us gifts. We feel the obligation to give them gifts back. The problem then, however, is the overspending. Isn't it the worst feeling after the holidays to look at your credit card statement and just feel that drop of dread in your stomach? I hate that feeling. I never want to feel that feeling again. But so many of us overspend during the holiday. A survey of over 12,000 U.S. shoppers showed that the average anticipated amount of holiday spending per person for 2022 will be just over $1,800. According to the APA, the American Psychological Association's 2022 survey, 66% of U.S. respondents report feeling financially stressed by the holiday spending. So the average American will be spending $1,800 on Christmas gifts this year, and 66% of them feel as though holiday spending stresses them out. So that's the problem. What could be the interpersonal boundary here? The first boundary, of course, is a personal one. You set your own budget and you choose to stick to it. But the interpersonal part comes when you... Inform your relatives <laughs> about what, if any, types of gifts you will be giving this year. So if you tend to give your, I don't know, your sister five presents, and this year is going to be a one present year, it might be smart to talk to your sister about that in advance of the holidays, because how's she going to feel if she gives you five gifts and you just give her one? If you're changing the rules, if you're changing the tradition, if you're changing what's been done in the past, I do believe it's important to verbalize it. It's about communicating ahead of time in whatever way that feels right for you. Perhaps you are texting your friends that you'd like to set a $20 cap for the gift exchange. And if the group doesn't want to do that, perhaps you opt out of that part of your festivities this year. Perhaps you opt out of the gift exchange at work. With your or with your friends. So that's problem number one. Potential interpersonal issue number two, of course, would be feeling uncomfortable spending multiple days at a relative's home for the holidays. <laughs> Whew, I know this to be true. This one's easy, right? If you don't want to stay at somebody's house for multiple days, just inform your relatives ahead of time. Let them know that you will be staying in a hotel or let them know you'll be staying for just one night. Communicate with them your plans. And if they push back, say, I understand you're upset. I know we're looking forward to spending time with you as well. 
Unfortunately, we're only going to stay one night. However, we're really looking forward to spending the holiday together. So I love the Oreo method. You say something positive, you insert your boundary, you finish it off again with something positive, and then you smile. Potential interpersonal issue number three. Your aunt always brings up uncomfortable religious or political topics during holiday meals. Let's talk about Aunt Mabel again. She needs a filter. What do we do about Aunt Mabel? You could do a couple of things here. Whatever you do, don't engage. Keep your waters, your inner waters, if that makes any sense, your inner waters, keep them calm. Do not let Mabel create a storm in your inner sea, in your inner sea, S-E-A-C. You could also say statements such as, all right, Aunt Mabel, we'll just have to agree to disagree or something like, I'm here to spend time with the family. I'm not here to debate. These statements are really powerful ways to nip the conversation in the bud, so to speak. Like, I hear you, Aunt Mabel, but I'm not engaging. And if all fails, don't forget, you have two legs. You can get up, you can take your plate, and you can leave the table. All right, here we go. Potential interpersonal issue number four. You feel socially obligated to do some holiday thing. Maybe it's host a party. Maybe it's send holiday cards. Maybe it's put lights on your house. The key here is and this is what makes it an interpersonal issue, is that your heart isn't in it. You're not doing it for you. You're doing it for other people. You feel like you're socially obligated to do this thing. And so this thing then just feels like another chore. If that feels like you, I suggest this year, it's quite simple. Just stop doing it. Just stop doing whatever it is. Listen to the voice inside your head that responds to a potential holiday task with dread. If you are about to, I don't know, send out invitations for a party and you don't want to host the party, there's a voice in your head that just like sighs (laughs) or there's a feeling in your gut that just doesn't feel right. I suggest this is the year you listen to that voice or that feeling inside and you just stop and you just don't do it. And if anybody asks you, why aren't you doing this? Why haven't you done that? Just say, this year we're doing things differently and end it at that. This year we're doing things differently. You do not owe anybody an explanation for anything in life and you certainly don't owe anybody an explanation of when it comes to dropping holiday traditions. Absolutely not. Potential interpersonal issue number five. Somebody says something to you that is clearly a dig. So let's talk about Aunt Mabel again. Aunt Mabel commented on the fact that you're still single. Maybe Uncle Fred does some sort of body shaming comment like, oh, you're having four cookies? Are you sure you need four cookies? Something like that. Triggering comment that clearly is meant to put you down a few pegs. All right. So Aunt Mabel, Uncle Fred, somebody else makes a dig comment at you, you could leave it alone or you could remember that the best time to set a boundary is the first time an offense happens. And so if it's the first time an offense happens and somebody makes a dig with you, I suggest you verbalize the fact that you feel uncomfortable by the comment. Uncle Fred, that comment makes me feel uncomfortable and I'd appreciate it if we do not talk about my body or my size or my shape or my weight from this moment moving forward. And that's the end. Uncle Fred's not going to like that. Too bad about Uncle Fred. He shouldn't be talking about your body. Aunt Mabel, I do not wish to discuss my marital status or my personal life during this holiday meal. Done. Aunt Mabel's not going to like that either, but too bad, Aunt Mabel. All right. Interpersonal issue number six. You're at a holiday party. The party keeps going on. Then you grab your coat to leave and somebody says, you can't leave now. It's way too early. Okay. So if you don't listen to Glennon Doyle's podcast, we can do hard things yet. I highly suggest it. Glennon has a lot to say about the holidays and being a sober person during the holidays. Essentially, she says that if you drink, right, 
your al- the alcohol is your crutch. The alcohol is what's getting you through the party. And when there's alcohol involved, people stay later, right? The party keeps going. If you're not drinking or if you just want to go to bed and you leave early, the host and perhaps the people who are imbibing can see that as a personal affront. So if the party keeps going and you just want to go to bed and you grab your coat to leave and somebody says something to you, what on earth do you say? First of all, remember, it's not your responsibility to take care of anybody else's feelings. Your responsibility is to you. Next, I would use the Oreo strategy. So positive thing, boundary, another positive thing to wrap it up. So, oh, thank you so much, Karen, for inviting me to this party. I had an absolute blast. This was So much fun. I can't believe how much fun I had. Unfortunately, I'm exhausted and I have a really busy day tomorrow, so I'm going to go. But thank you so much for inviting me and I can't wait until your party next year. Thank you so much. So we're going to Oreo cookie it and we're not going to feel bad about setting our boundary. Another great thing to do here with regard to this situation would be to perhaps, if you know you're going to want to leave early... If you know the party is going to be a rager and it's going to go to midnight, 2 a.m., and you know you're going to want to leave at 9, perhaps you tell Karen ahead of time. You should say, I'm so excited to come to your party, Karen, on Friday. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave a little bit early because we got an early morning the next morning. I just want to let you know. That will completely diffuse Karen immediately, but you got to do it a couple days in advance. And then finally, I wanted to add this one in for those of us who are still COVID concerned. And the potential interpersonal problem is you feel uncomfortable fraternizing with unvaccinated folks or you feel uncomfortable with a big crowd and you don't want you or your loved ones to get sick. Okay, so the problem is COVID's still running rampant. The problem is we don't feel great about completely letting down our health boundaries, okay? So what do you do? If you don't want to expand your circle this year, you can say something like, to keep everyone safe and healthy this year, I am going to host just my immediate family in my home, but we'd love to celebrate with you in a different way. Let's brainstorm together as to what that different way could be like. So I know I really want to see you too. It's just not the holidays without our loved ones close. I am still unfortunately feeling uncomfortable with the recent rise in COVID cases. So I'm only going to be spending the holidays with my immediate family. But let's brainstorm together about how we can still celebrate the festivities together this year in ways that are safe and healthy for everybody. Bam. Done. Nobody's going to push back on that. And if they do, smile. Don't let anybody create a storm on your inner sea. The final word today is that boundaries are sexy, of course, but also don't forget to focus on sleep and nutrition this holiday season, especially. Always we should be focusing on sleep and nutrition. But during the holiday season, especially. Because when your body feels depleted, you are more likely to be cranky. You are more likely to make decisions that don't protect your well-being. You are more likely to snap at people in your life. (laughs) You are less likely to think clearly. You are less likely to stay calm. So if you do anything this month, make sure you're sleeping well. So go to bed early. Make sure you are eating right and do everything you can to preserve your inner calm. Because even though the holidays are festive and fun, the holidays can also be stressful, frustrating, and downright difficult for many of us. So this is a conclusion to Boundaries Week. I so hope I gave you some tips that you can take into your holiday festivities this year. Because this episode is so long, we're going to wrap it up. But if you have anything to say about libraries, you listen to episode 325, you have something to say about libraries, now is the time to call or email me. I've gotten 
some feedback on people and their libraries, and I'm going to add them into a show next week. So send me those if you have them. If you haven't left the show a review, go on with your bad self and do that because all I want for Christmas is your podcast reviews. Thank you so much. I will see you Tuesday where we are discussing... I'm going to, I'm actually going to leave it a surprise. Yes, I do know what we're talking about, but I'll leave it as a surprise. I will see you Tuesday. Have an amazing weekend. Get your sleep, eat good food, and I will see you next week. Take care. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Claudia's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. I had just moved to a new city and barely even knew where the grocery store was yet. When my car wouldn't start one morning, I didn't know who to ask about local shops. But I remembered a name from back home, O'Reilly Auto Parts. I called, and they pointed me to a great mechanic just down the street. Now, I feel a little more at home. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get ready, Ohio. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is coming to the Buckeye State. And to kick things off, you can get started with $100 in free bets as an early sign-on bonus. Plus, when you sign up today with promo code OHIO, you'll be all set for when FanDuel goes live in Ohio. Then you can bet on all your favorite teams in all your favorite sports with $100 in free bets. Just download FanDuel's top-rated sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 21 plus and present in Ohio. Bonus issued in non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after FanDuel accepts its first real money sports wager in Ohio. one one Unique user identity verification required. Offer ends on the go-live date. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ohio, this is your chance to get in on the action. Join today with promo code OHIO.